Hello and welcome to the channel Let's Learn Electronics. Here our aim is to collect most of the relevant study material in the form of simple video tutorials. And without wasting time, let's move ahead. To study electronics engineering, we should recall what semiconductors are. And this is what we are going to do in this first video. We will simply brush up the basics of semiconductor theory that what semiconductors are, what makes them special and unique. And before that, we must recall what are conductors and insulators. आसान भाषा में एक्सप्लेन करूं तो कंडक्टर्स वो मटेरियल हैं जिनसे करंट पास हो सकता है इंसुलेटर्स वो मटेरियल हैं जिनसे करंट पास नहीं हो सकता है दिस इज समथिंग वी हैव बीन स्टडीइंग सिंस स्कूल बट वी शुड रिकॉल बिफोर गोइंग अहेड दिस इज जस्ट एन एनिमेशन टू शो यू हाउ कंडक्टर्स बिहेव द वैलेंस शेल हैज अ फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन इट जंप्स आउट ऑफ द शेल एंड इट्स फ्री टू मूव and now it is so happy after jumping out because this free electron will cause current to flow in a material this free electron um, smiling here is the reason why a material becomes a conductor and starts conducting on the contrary or on the other hand the insulators do not have this liberty let me show you the picture of an insulator this is just a general picture don't take it seriously uh, the electrons are not a smiley face but here they seem to be very unhappy because they are tightly bound they cannot move out of their location and so this material behaves as an as an insulator because it it they cannot allow current to flow now what are semiconductors on the left i have tried to show you a simple picture of an isolated silicon atom this is how it looks like it's a tetravalent structure around the nucleus we have two shells which are completely filled so these electrons have stable energies this is the third shell which is the valence shell it has four electrons in it and that is why it, it is called a tetravalent structure and these electrons these four electrons combine with the adjacent atoms like this this is how covalent bonds are formed between the adjacent atoms and a crystal structure is formed is the crystal structure proceeds in this way and if we recall the periodic table in the periodic table silicon lies here in the group 4 germanium is also a popular a semiconductor material then we have several compound semiconductor materials which are formed using trivalent and pentavalent elements i'll mention that later on um, but here let's just focus on sil silicon this is the basic atomic structure or the electronic configuration as you can see here its atomic number is 14 it lies in the group 4 of the periodic table Similarly we have germanium its atomic number is 32 but it is also a tetravalent structure and so the electrical properties of silicon and germanium are very similar and that's why they um, are present in the same group of periodic table another common semiconductor material it's an example of a compound semiconductor uh which consists of gallium and arsenide gallium is a trivalent um, atom and arsenic is a pentavalent atom this structure combines and creates and create gallium arsenide it's widely used in various electronic machines and devices now here we'll try to quickly recall the concept of band diagrams how band diagrams are formed and before that let's focus on this isolated atom first now as you can see here it has three shells every shell will have an amount of energy will possess an amount of energy these electrons in the first shell will possess some energy the second shell the electrons in the second shell will possess some energy just some different uh, amount of energies and the valence shell will have the maximum amount of energies because it is far away from the nucleus similarly this first shell will have minimum energy levels uh, minimum amount of energies because it is closest to the nucleus and that is why these electrons 
are the stable ones so if we graphically uh, represent the electronic energies a graph like this is prepared the first shell lies over here with the minimum amount of energy similarly the second shell will have an intermediate amount and the valence shell will have the maximum amount of energies the energy level of valence shell always appear on the top this is how energy band uh, energy levels are represented now how the bands are created we know that practically an isolated atom does not exist we cannot see an isolated atom from our naked eye so uh, theoretically it is possible to study that but when we um, study the practical uh, scenario the crystals are formed because of those isolated atoms those isolated atoms combine and together millions of atoms create a crystal and when we consider that crystal structure no two electrons are going to experience the same amount of energies bilkul aasan bhasha mein explain karu ek isolated atom hai jab hum use individually consider karenge to unki energy levels uh, same ho sakte hain but jab wo combine ho gaye to adjacent atom ek force of attraction laga raha hai the adjacent nucleus will attract the electrons the uh, the adjacent electrons the ele adjacent electrons will repel the electrons to itni sari forces of attractions repulsions hongi ke ultimately no true electrons will have the exact same amount of energies in them phir jab hum un slightly different energies ko combine karenge to band formation ho jayegi let me explain it once again now let's consider this animation this is how one isolated atom has combined with the other one and the third one and crystal structure is being formed now this this electron will have this uh, first shell will have some amount of energy the second shell will have slightly higher or less amount of energy the other one will have slightly higher or less amount of energies kyunki kisi mein फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन की वजह से एनर्जी लेवल बढ़ जाएगा किसी में घट जाएगा वो सब ऐसे कलेक्ट करेंगे तो बहुत सारी इंडिविजुअल लाइंस क्रिएट होती जाएंगी फॉर गिव मी फॉर माय पुअर ड्राइंग बट आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू शो यू दैट एवरी इलेक्ट्रॉन विल हैव स्लाइटली स्लाइटली डिफरेंट अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी लेवल्स एंड टूगेदर वेन दीज माइन्यूट डिस्क्रीट लेवल्स कम्बाइंड दे अपीयर एज अ बैंड this is how bands are formed when we consider a crystal structure which will have millions of electrons every electron and every shell will possess a different amount of energy levels ab hum second shell consider kare to this second shell will have a different energy level this second shell will have slightly different energy level this will have slightly higher or lower so this way various discrete levels or lines are formed and when we integrate all these lines they appear as a band to us and we can simply summarize that this is the energy band of the second shell when we summarize them this is how the band of a second shell appears we have collected all we have integrated all the energy levels we have integrated all the energy levels as a band this is something which is very basic and we have been studying since class 11th i think but we should recall it before studying electronics engineering syllabus and that's why in the first video we'll only brush up the basics when the valence shell is considered these valence shells will sum up into a different um, energy band this is how a band diagram looks like this is how a band diagram is actually formed If, uh, when we consider a single atom simple discrete lines can be drawn but when we consider the crystal structure those discrete lines will ultimately be integrated 
in a band structure in a band diagram i hope um, i have helped you in just recalling and revising the concept of band diagrams an isolated atom and their discrete energy levels when crystal is formed they ultimately integrate up or sum up as a band uh, like this now what is a conduction band this band indicates the first shell the energy levels in the first shell this indicates the energy levels in the second shell this is the uh, valence um, shell and now this this band indicates the amount of energy which is required to uh, let the electrons flow freely in the form of a current if the electron attains this much of energy the electron will be free and will be able to jump out of the valence band into the conduction band over here as you can see this electron attains enough energy that this electron jumps out and this this is the amount of energy which it has attained and now it's free to move this electron is free to move and that is how these valence electrons when attain energy they are they jump up here and they move to the conduction band conduction band represents the free electrons which are capable of flowing the current in a material conduction band indicates those free electrons this is something called a forbidden energy gap if an electron can overcome this energy gap this will the electron will jump up here and will cause current conductors have this conduction band and valence band almost overlapping i'll show you uh, in the next slide but this is just a general definition which you can uh, read now insulators will have this energy band this uh, valence and uh, conduction band and uh, the energy gap is almost practically um, um, if this gap cannot be minimized so um, electrons cannot practically jump over here and that's why these materials are called insulators because of this large energy gap Similarly, semiconductors uh, have uh, energy gap to a le very less uh, level, a less amount. They can practically um, jump into the conduction band, and that's why they conduct in under certain situations. On the other hand, conductors have this overlapping um, uh, band gap, so they the their valence electrons are always free and they can cause electricity in, in any time whenever an electric field is applied those valid valence electrons are free to move uh, in under every condition agar hum semiconductors ki jin ko humne abhi tak discuss kiya hai unki baat kare to this energy gap of silicon will be different because of uh, its atomic structure um, the uh, germanium will have a different energy gap or gallium arsenide will have a different energy gaps maine sirf unki uh, values yahan um, mention ki hai hum in sab ko detail mein aage aane wali videos mein padhenge abhi tak ke liye ye video dekhne ke liye dhanyawad thank you for watching this video and if you have watched it so far please click on like share and subscribe and i hope that we will be meeting soon again in the next video till then bye bye